Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Once again we're back up at Sunrise Lakes, just outside Harrogate, but we're on the middle pool today rather than the match lake. We've come down here just to do a bit of a session really, and it's more for me to sort of practice a bit of open water commercial fishing if you like. So I've brought with me a selection of pellets, some casters and some worms, kept things fairly simple, but like I say, I just want to have a bit of a practice fishing open water like this, because there's a few venues that hopefully over the next few weeks we're going to go to where it's not going to be fishing to islands, it'll be open water for carp and bream, and that's what we're after today on this middle pool. So with that in mind, I'm going to fish three lines today. I'm going to fish a short line at six metres where I'm going to loose feed casters and also put in a little bit of caster and pellet on the bottom and just sort of see what happens there, trying to catch a mixture of silvers up in the water and equal and possibly a few skimmers and maybe the odd carp on the deck. Out long I'm going to fish two pellet lines and the, the crux of that really is trying to find out at this time of year because the weather's been very changeable whether the fish are wanting to, f to feed on softened damp pellets and expanders or whether I can get away with catching them on hard six mil pellets. So that's going to be why I've set up those two lines. So two different approaches out there but I want to see whether the water's warm enough to catch on hard pellets or whether it's going to be a case of fishing expanders still and like I say that'll give me an idea when I go to a few commercials over the next few weeks which is going to be the best bait. So that brings us on to the rigs then. Like I say I've, I've set up three lines and I've as usual set up 101 rigs to cover all eventualities. So I'll start off with the short line. I've set up three rigs there, all stuff that you'll have seen before. Two shallow rigs involving Preston Chiantis, single six elastic, 011 main line, down to an 011 hook length and a banded caster. Basically, dead simple, strung 11s through the rigs, one at two foot and one at three foot. And like I say, a banded caster on a B911 to 011 hook length. So dead simple with that, just going to loose feed a few casters over that short line and see if the fish want to be either three foot deep or two foot deep, possibly even go shallower, maybe down to a foot with that rig. But like I say, the crux of this session is really sussing out where the fish want to be in the water. The uh, the other rig on that line is a deck rig. As you can see, we've got plenty of depth there, a good six and a half, seven foot. And in this case, I've just got a sensor Jean Francois, 013 main line, double four elastic on a puller kit, just in case we hook a few better fish. Back shotted as per usual. Then coming down, it's just a bulk, three droppers, which are number tens, and then an 012 fluorocarbon hook length to a size 16. Drennan Silverfish match hook. A nice square bend, that's the sort of hook that you'll see me use a lot over the sort of winter and springtime on commercials. Being that it's a square bend, I can get away with fishing sections of worm, double cast or even pellets. So a nice versatile hook. And like I say, when you're not 100% sure what you're going to be catching or fishing for, that's where you want to change your rig so you've got options then. So that's the short line looked at. Next, we'll look at the two long lines. I've got them spread apart quite nicely, sort of 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, which is something you want to do, especially when you're fishing out long. I'm fishing 14 and a half metres, so I want to get the lines nice and split, a nice, a nice distance between them, so I'm not splitting the fish over each. Like I say, I want to be able to see whether it's going to be expanders on one line that's going to be best or hard pellets on the other. So if I set them too close, then I'm not 100% sure whether the fish are just drifting between the two. So in terms of expanders and hard pellets, the hard pellet rigs, as you'll see me use all the time, Garblino DC23 pencil floats, as per use, low 15 mainline, Drennan yellow bungee, sort of 10 to 12 at the top end, and then a strung bulk on the lighter rig, a 0.4, it's a bit more strung on the heavier rig, a 0.6, it's a bit tighter bulked, down to an 013 hook length, 18 LWG from Guru, and a small bait band for 6mm pellet. Like I say, you'll see me use these on all my, my hard pellet sessions. And the crux of setting up two is I want to see whether it's best to fish a nice and heavy positive rig and bomb the bait down, whether I need to lay the rig in through the water and try and catch the fish on the drop. Again, similar to with the short line, I want to decide whether the fish are up in the water or whether I can nail them to the bottom and catch them nice and quickly. Ideally, that's what I want to do. Um, so like I say, that's the long line with the, the hard pellets. And then the long line, I'm going to fish the expanders. Different style float this time because you're fishing sort of a lighter bait, you need to be more positive and I'm looking for skimmers on this line really. Garblino DC 15s, a 0.8 and a 0.4, double five elastic in the top end, 015 main lines again. But when it comes to fishing the expanders, I prefer to fish a bulk and droppers. So on the lighter rig, a 0.4, I've got three number 10 droppers down the line. On the heavier rig, a 0.6, I've got a bulk and then two number 10s and two number 10s. Six inch hook lengths again, 012 fluorocarbon, a 14 silverfish match hook on the, the heavier rig and a 16 on the lighter rig. Like I say, it's a lot of rigs and a lot of different ways of fishing the peg today. 
but that, like I say, it's, it's purely about trying to suss out the peg and work out whether I can nail the fish to the deck, what they want to feed on, and whether they're going to be a bit sort of iffy and come off bottom. So, like I say, plenty of rigs, plenty of options, and I'm just going to mix and match through the session and try and build a weight. Hopefully today, I'm going to set a target of around 40 to 50 pound. There's going to be plenty of rain, so like I said, the filming's going to be, be a bit all over the place, but we'll get a bit of bait fed now. I'm going to start off on the short line with a few, few micros, a few casters, possibly a bit of chop worm in there and then feed my long lines with some hard pellets, which I'm going to loose feed over the top. And on the, uh, the left hand line, which is going to be the, the expander line, some dampened four mils. Like I say, nothing too complicated, but I'm covering all eventualities. So we'll turn around on the box now, get the peg fed and we'll start fishing. Right, so now that I've run through the rigs, I'm going to feed the peg. I'm going to kick off on the short line at six metres with a little nugget of micros and a handful of caster. Like I say, I'm going to loose, be loose feeding caster over the top of that line, so I don't want to put too much bait on the bottom, but I need something down there just in case the fish don't want to come off bottom today. I'm going to ship out to my marker. Like I say, it's six metres, and just pop the bait in there. One thing that I've done as well that you'll notice, I'm fishing slightly sort of towards the one o'clock position. That's purely because my rules are to my right hand side. So when I strike, I can lift over and ship back and get the fish out of the peg nice and quick. Rather than having to ship straight back, I can sort of draw the fish out nice and quick from the peg. So that's my short line fed. So I'll get the other sections on, ready to feed my 14 and a half metre lines. I'm going to start off on the left hand line and put in probably about 30 four mil pellets. I don't want to feed too much, like I say, I'm going to judge the session as it goes on. I don't want to commit too much too early. So I'll put a couple of pellets in there. I'll say these are just soaked four mil um, screttings pellets. And I'm just going to ship out to my marker. Again, as per usual, when it comes to picking an area of your swim to fish, Make sure you plumb around using the 30 gram and a 10 gram plumb, it takes plenty of time. And then also pick an area where you know you can see your float all day. So I've picked two areas that are in nice white water. There's going to be no dappling there so I can, I can see the float all day. And that's especially important when there's a ripple on or, or if you're going to get plenty of rain into the, into the course of the day. So I've reached my marker. Line up with a nice small far bank marker as well. It's going to be nice and accurate, which is dead important with pellet fishing, especially when you're not putting in a lot of bait. And I'll just deposit those four mils out at 14 and a half metres. On my right hand line, where I'm going to fish the, the hard pellets, I'm just going to put in about 10 or 15 just on the bottom, just to kick off. Again, I'm going to look to ping pellets over that. And ideally, if we start catching on that, we should build a decent way to some better quality fish. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of water in the cup and all that does is soak the pellets briefly and then it also stops them jumping out of the, the cup when you're shipping out as well. So again, nice and steady. It's dead important when it comes to fishing at, at long distance at 14 and a half metres that you do set your rulers correctly so you can just ship across your knees nice and easy. Like I say, it's a bit, bit more difficult today because we've had a little bit of uh, bit of rain so the pole's a bit sticky but exactly the same get out to my marker and just cup those sort of 10 or 15 six mils in see us shipping out there you'll see a bit of water jump out the cup but no pellets will come out because like i said they'll be sat beneath the water so it's quite a useful tip that when you you're fishing hard pellets and you're shipping out long distance especially if you've got to double and ship tiny bit of water in the bottom of the cup just stops them jumping out as easily. So that's the peg fed. So I'm going to kick off now on the short line at six metres. I'll just take the extra sections off. Put them to one side. I'm going to start off on the deck rig. It's a nice positive float and hopefully if the fish are feeding they'll have followed those, those casters down. So I'm just going to start off on a single caster. I've left some out to dry a little bit on the side tray. And especially when you're using banded caster, that's something really important to do. 
just lets the casters crisp up a little bit so the band doesn't smash them but we'll show you that shortly if we get the fish feeding shallow but a single caster nice light rig and we'll see if there's any fish over those micros and casters early and it might take a while to get the fish going today purely because I don't really know what the fishing's been like up here over the past couple of weeks. We were up here sort of three weeks ago on the match pull when it was freezing cold and the only things that had feed were F1s and a couple of skimmers. So that float settled nicely, so we'll just now wait for a bite and see if anything happens. Again, I'm not expecting hundreds of fish today, I'm just expecting to try and build the peg and see. See what the best rig or what the best bait is to catch them on. I suspect pellets will work, but like I say today, it's going to be a choice of expanders and hard pellets out long. But I'm also putting in this short line purely to see what sort of silverfish are feeding this time of year, if the roach will come up or if the skimmers are off bottom as well. Especially when you're fishing sort of two, three foot with casters on a commercial, you can get a good judgment of whether the skimmers are, are going to settle on the bottom or if they're coming off the deck. If you catch a few sort of three foot deep, then it's going to be very hard this time of year to pin them down on the deck. Because obviously what happens when, say, this, uh, this month we've had a really cold spell and then suddenly the temperatures have come up to about sort of 10, 10, 11 degrees or so. So obviously the top few layers of the water will warm up and that's when you can get the fish unsettled and it's hard to keep them on the deck because obviously the cold water's at the bottom and they want to sit sort of mid-water where there's a, a warmer layer. So that's why it's important to set up a few rigs just to see if the fish are going to come shallow. So I'll keep loose feeding a few casters. In a second I'll pick up my catapult and start pinging pellets over that 14 and a half metre line. Like I said, we'll just rotate the lines and see what we can catch. Right, so there's a bite and a fish on now. So I've had to wait probably 10 or 15 minutes for this bite. Hooked and lost a fish early, then had to go shallow and had a couple of little indications. Hooks dropped out in the net, it's a nice little, it's like a roachwood hybrid that. Nice little silverfish to kick off the session. Like I say, definitely after the first 15, 20 minutes of this, uh, of this session, you can tell that the fish just don't want to settle properly. So I've tried shallow for about five minutes, had a couple of little indications there but there's been no real proper bites and there's been no pattern at all. Going on the deck where I've put in quite a few micros and a few casters, it's, it's evident that the fish haven't really worked their way through the bait that much. So they're definitely not feeding aggressively, so I think it's going to be a case of just little bits of bait every so often and just trying to put, put fish on the hook that way. So I've given very few options and just work through it like that. I don't think they're settling and putting their heads down and really having a proper feed as yet, so I'm going to cut down on the feeds when I'm loose feeding the casters and same with the pellets, I'm going to cut down from about sort of 10 casters a time to about 4, 4 to 5. And same when I'm fishing the long line where I'm pinging hard sixes, I'm going to cut down from sort of 6 pellets to about 3 every time. Like I say, that's purely going off the initial response that I've had in like the first sort of 10-15 minutes of the session. Definitely don't think it's going to be a day where I can pile the bait in and really sort of attack the peg. Again, being that I've tried shallow on that three foot rig with banded cast and had a few indications, I know that the fish will probably come shallow later in the day if I just keep trickling in a little bit of loose feed. But I won't actually start fishing shallow properly till I see sort of a swirl or an indication that the fish are around 18 inches to, to 12 inches deep. And hopefully after sort of next 10-15 minutes we'll have rested that long line on the, 
the softened four mils for a good half hour, 40 minutes, something like that, so we can have a go on that and see if the fish have settled there. Again, because I've not had a, a particularly strong response off the silver fish on the short line, I know that those hard fours, or the, the slightly softened four mils, I should say, most of those are still going to be sat on the bottom waiting for better fish. They're not going to be getting picked up by roach and, and small skimmers. So I know that I can leave that line for a little bit longer. If I was getting loads of bites on the short line from silvers, then I'd probably look to top that up once or twice before I actually went on it. Again, the other thing, fishing a deck rig like this will tell you quite a lot, especially with the sensitive bristle. If the fish are coming shallow, you'll see the float moving side to side a lot more. Rather than getting sort of dips on the bristle, you'll see the, the actual body of the float move where fish are brushing into the line, and that's when you can tell there's a lot of fish shallow. So I know that it's not actually worth going on the three, three and two foot rigs just yet. It's going to be another hour or so before those will come good. Like I say, it's, it's been a steady start, but at least we're off the mark now with one fish in the net. So hopefully, as the day goes on, we'll build the peg, introduce little bits of bait, little and often, and hopefully get a few better fish feeding towards the end. Right, so that's the first 45 minutes out of the way, and it's quite clear already that the fish aren't prepared to settle over any amount of bait. I foul hooked two fish and lost them both. Decent, felt like F1's possibly carp, something like that, over that short line but they've not got their heads down, they're not feeding properly as yet, so I'm going to leave that to settle. Keep loose feeding a few, few casters over the top, but it's now time to have a go over those four mil pellets on the long line. I'm going to actually start with the heaviest rig on this and a six mil expander and just see if there's a better fish down there straight away. If not, then I'll go to the point four rig and see if, uh, see if it needs a bit more finesse to catch a few fish, but Good thing is I've fed about 30 pellets out there. It's had a good 45 minutes to settle, so hopefully the fish will have worked through their way through that amount of bait. I think on that short line, I've definitely fed a bit too much to start off properly with. I think sort of half a handful of casters was a little bit too much, and the fish just haven't worked their way through them yet. So we'll ship out to 14 and a half metres, and just see if there's a fish or two to be caught out there on the expander. you can probably see there's a bit of a ripple on the water now and that's why I've set up two different weights of rigs on both the long lines just in case it gets up and I can't quite see the float And see I've got the floats dotted right down as per usual so I might have to take a little bit off this just so I can see it a bit more clearly. I can just about see that now. That's a bite and a fish now on the 6mm expander. Feels like a skimmer. Not a big fish at all, this. But at least there's one or two down there. Again, small skimmer, a few ounces. He's just tucked inside the mouth, that one. Again, lovely little fish. Not going to build a massive weight if we're catching at that sort of rate, those size fish, but at least it shows us one or two fish down there. So we'll try another six mil. Again, if, if it's the case that we're waiting ages on a six mil, I'll try the, the, uh, the lighter rig with the four mil. And if that's the way that we're gonna have to build a weight off that line, fishing sort of a bit quicker with a four mil expander and getting bites faster, then that's what we'll have to do.
Okay, and before I place the rigging, just going to loose feed a few casters over that short line, keep that fed. And just lower that expander into position. So what I'll do is just let the rig straighten, straighten up a bit, hold the float out of the water by about 12 inches or so, and then just lower it back in. And just trying to get that float to catch the surface tension. Right, so there's a fish on the formula expander straight away. It's barely been in a minute and it's gone straight away. Not a big fish again. Possibly another small skimmer. Actually, it's a nice roach, that. <laughs> And not the greatest bit of netting, but that's a lovely fish. Hook's just dropped out in the net as well. So there's clearly a few quality roach down there. Ideally, I want to be catching those on the short line if I can. I'll just trim this rig a little bit and then we'll get back out there on a formula expander and try and get another. And every time I go up with the rig, I'm just going to chuck a few casters over that short line. And equally ping two or three pellets long while I've got the pole out my hands, it's a little bit easier. And just keep that line fed as well. Same again, just lowering the, the rig in nice and gently. And then we're fishing straight away. So it might be a case today that they want smaller baits, less quantities. Like I say, just a bit more finesse in the approach. Another couple of indications there, and that's another fish on. It feels like a skimmer, this. It's definitely a slightly heavier fish. The difference that's made is just gone to a lighter rig and a four mil pellet rather than a six. We had two fish in two chucks really quickly. This looks like it could be a decent line today. Feels like a good bream, this. I'm just going to take it a bit more carefully because we're only on a size 16 hook. It's definitely a much bigger fish, this. It's a lovely bream, and these are sort of the weight builders that we're after on that line. Again, easily sort of two, two and a bit pounds. It's a lovely fish to catch that. And proper old warrior of a bream, that really, really covered in marks and stuff, but those are the sort of weight builders that we're looking for on that line. So we're getting popped in the net, and hopefully get out there and have a few more. Again, just gonna dot that float down a little bit more again, being that it's calmed down a bit. And really important this time of year that you do dot your floats down. I could see there, there was a little dip on the float and it started to rise up. Like I say, just by having the float dotted down a little bit more, you can sort of magnify those bites.
but at least we've got a couple of pound in the net like i say it's amazing how much of a difference it can make switch from a six to a four mil expander and a change of rig as well i think it could be the case that with the heavier rig it's, it's bombing past them a bit too much and they're not getting chance to see it so occasionally with bream they'll they'll watch a bait go past them if they sat off bottom go down pick it up and then come back up in the water and that's when you'll see those lift bites So that's another bite straight away again, and another fish on the four mil expander. Doesn't feel quite as big, this possibly a small skimmer or roach, but it's definitely looking like a line that will produce that. It's again only about a quarter of the size of the last one, but shows that the fish are happy to feed on those four mil pellets when they've been dampened down and a four mil expander's working. So at least we've got a line that's produ producing quite consistently now. It's getting a few casters over that short line. Rebait and I'll ping a few more over that line with the hard sixes. And to build a weight like this, it's just a case of keeping a good rhythm, keeping your lines fed, then you can soon build a weight. Right, so a quick update now on the hour mark of the session. We've not had the particularly fast start that we were after, but we've had a few bream and a few roach and started to sort of suss the peg out a little bit. I've topped up that long line after catching those couple of bream and a few roach over the four mil pellets. I've kept pinging the, the, the uh, hard six over that right hand long line, but I think now after an hour or so, the fish should hopefully have settled on that short line at six meters on the deck. I've had a quick go of shallow over the top of that line and there's just been a couple more daft bites so I think the way to catch them today is going to be sort of hard on the bottom with decent rigs like I say bombing a sort of a target hook bait down to them so I've just gone out on, on double caster and we'll see if we can get a bite being that I don't think the fish are going to come shallow today or feed properly shallow and we'll, I don't think that's the way to build a weight I'm going to cut down on the amount of loose feed I'm putting in so instead of sort of five or six casters constantly. I'm just going to concentrate on putting about 10 casters round the float every so often and try and keep the fish settled on the bottom. And if we can start putting a few skimmers together and decent bream with the odd carp, we'll soon build a good weight. You can even see a few little bubbles coming up from around the float there on that short line and that's where the fish are, are tucking into those, exp those um, dampened micros. Again, one thing to note, I've not put ground bait in, because I do find on the soft, flat bottom like we have here today, if you do put ground bait in, the fish can burrow in and start stirring up the silt and you'll get a lot of, lot of missed bites and liners. So it might be a case that I don't put any more micros on this short line, I might just put four mils with the casters and, again, something that I'm going to consider on all the lines now is putting a cad pot on, because I think the fish do want a little bit of feed. But I think if given too many options, sort of put in a decent pot of bait, I think that can unsettle them. And like I say, just result in, in missing bites. There's another liner there. In missing bites and not really catching the most from the peg. I say, because I've topped up that, that line to the left with um, the dampened four mils, I'm going to leave that for another sort of 15, 20 minutes before going back on it. I think I keep pinging hard sixes out there. I don't think I'm too concerned about overfeeding the fish, so as long as I can keep sort of two or three hard sixes going over that right hand line, I think as the day goes on the fish will just get more and more confident and hopefully that's the line where we'll catch the carp. There's plenty of little digs on the float now, so there's definitely a few fish settled down there and again that's why I don't want to be loose feeding too much. 
I don't want to bring the fish sort of above the bulk on the rig and start start suffering with foul hookers and liners. The other thing I might do on this line as well is switch to fishing a section of worm on the hook, a bit of a target bait over the casters. Because I do find, especially on venues like this where there's plenty of decent bream in there, if you fish a caster you can get lots sort of roach and stuff like that. If you fish a section of a worm, it seems to be much more selective for the bream, so I think that'll be my next go-to bait. Again, fish a bait that, like I say, will stand out rather than blend in. Plenty of little movements on the float, so there's certainly a few fish down there. Okay, because I'm fishing for silverfish on this line, rather than sort of F1s and, and small carp, I've got the float about an inch over depth, and I've not dotted it right down to a pimple again, because if there's bream and stuff brushing into the line, I don't want to be foul hooking them if I can, because the worst thing you can do when there's bream over, over your feed is foul hook one, because that'll just spook the entire shoal. So I want to wait for a proper steady indication and I know that there's a fish, there's a fish on then in that case. Oop, a tiny little lift there. I think I might have fouled up from there like I was saying. Didn't feel like a big fish, probably a roach. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll slip on a small section of worm and just see if, if that does the trick and catches us a quick bream. Again, just very lightly hooking a dendrobina, then breaking it in half. We'll save that other bit for the hook shortly. Again, by fishing about an inch over depth with this rig, I can get away with fishing a fine bristle but also a decent hook bait. So it just gives a bit more versatility to the rig. Okay, while I'm just letting that settle and the, the hook bait swing under the float, I'm just going to ping a few four or five, six mil pellets over that long line again. And then just lower that rig into position. And I think by now we've probably got somewhere between six and eight pound in the net. So not exactly a fast start today, but at least we're off the mark. And I'm, like, I said, like I said at the start of the session, it's going to be one where we're going to have to build our way into the peg and try and suss things out as they go along. The worst thing you can do this time of year, especially like I say in spring when the weather's been changeable, is attack the peg from the off, put loads of bait in and knack your peg straight away. If you start slowly, you can build the peg towards the end of the day. And especially when the weather starts to warm up, sort of after three, four o'clock, that's when you can really put plenty of fish in the net. And if I top up this area of the peg, I'll probably just feed it with a couple of micros, then about sort of 20 or 30 casters and big pot it in. Just want enough bait down there so that the, the bream and skimmers and decent roach can settle. And then when I put a rig over the top, they've not got too many options in terms of hook baits. And I think by loose feeding as well, I don't think a lot of that's been eaten on the way down or on the drop. So I think a lot of that settled and probably spread the fish around this area of the peg. So. That's something I've got to consider as well. This is an area of the peg that I'll have to keep coming back to as the fish have worked their way through the bait and then I can focus them in one area using a, a big pot and then occasionally if I feel like I need to draw fish, that's when I'll loose feed. I'll probably give this another sort of four or five minutes and then I'll go out long on that, that line with the expanders and hopefully the fish will have settled back over there. I suspect they will. Little indication there on the float. So I was expecting a quick response on the worm, but it's not happened. Then what I'll also do, once I've sussed out if there's a few fish settling over that left-hand line over the, the four mils, I'll have a quick go for the first time in the day over that right-hand line over the six mils and see if, see if there's a few better fish to be caught over there. 
hopefully by just pinging sort of twos and threes of six mil pellets we've drawn a few fish into the peg and got them settled and feeding confidently Right, so after five minutes on that section of worm, I've not had a bite on it or a proper indication to strike at, so I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to take that off the hook and top up that line with just a few casters and a couple of micros. Again, stop getting indications there, so it could be the case that the fish have cleared it all out and moved off. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of bait and hopefully see if the fish will come back. I'm going to be mindful now that the lake's towing a bit, so I'm going to have to cup it in slightly off to, to my right hand side just to compensate. So, what I'll do now I've done that is have a go over that 14 and a half metre line with the expanders again. So I think the longer I leave the, the hard pellet line, I think the better it'll fish. It does seem like so far the best line really to catch the skimmers or get bites consistently has been that long line on, on a four mil expander. And I do think it works well because the four mil expander blends in really well with damp and four mil pellets. It's, it's almost indistinguishable when it's on the deck. So once the fish have got confident feeding on particle baits like that, you know that if you can replicate it, you will get bites. So I'm just going to ship out and lower that rig in. I've also seen a couple of little bubbles come up and looks like there's, there might be a few fish over that hard pellet line so probably give this about 10 or 15 minutes then have a go over that and see if the fish have settled there because like I say if we can catch them on hard pellets then we should be in for a decent day's fishing. Right so what I'm going to do now is have a quick go on the the, uh, the hard pellet line with the hard six mil on the, the band. I've had a, a short stint there for about five or ten minutes on the, the expander and not really had any proper indications to strike at so what I'm going to do is just have a go on the, the lightest of the two rigs being that it's suddenly gone flat calm and see if we can hook anything. Again, I've pretty much been feeding this line all day with sort of fours and fives, six mil pellets like that, just sort of grouping them fairly tightly every sort of five minutes or so. And I've had a few roach off it, it's really strange that I've not actually had any carp or skimmers or anything, it's just been roach that I've had off that line. So now that I've fed it with a few pellets, I'm just going to gently lay the rig in. Again, with all hard pellet fishing, the crux of it is making sure that the float's plumb to absolutely dead depth. Especially on a silty bottom like that, so using a nice 30 gram plummet to get your general reading, and then a 10 gram to get the float dotted right down. And then you can see when the pellet registers on the bristle. And really surprising that I've not had any proper carp off this line. I mean, that's what I've fed it for, but it seems like I say that the roach want to feed on the, the hard six mil pellets. It's a bit of an indication there. There's definitely a few fish down there. Again, hopefully they'll start to they'll start to feed a bit more aggressively on this line. And if they do and I start suffering with line bites and foul looked fish and miss bites, I can always go onto that point six rig. We'll just see if we can get a bite or two on this. There's definitely a few fish down there because I'm getting plenty of indications. And that's a bite and a fish on.
Again, doesn't feel like a big fish, could be another roach or a small skimmer or something. Which isn't really what you expect to catch on, on a hard six mil pellet, but especially this time of year. It is a very small skimmer. Again, these are the sort of stamper fish I was expecting to catch short on the caster or even on sort of a formula expander, but I say it's been very unpredictable today. Hooked right in the top lip, which is where you want to hook these fish on hard pellets. I'm getting popped in the net. So again, always check the pellet, make sure it's good to go out for another cast. Make sure it's lined up properly on the band. Coming off the back of the hook. And we'll see if we can get another bite or two while it's nice and calm on this light rig. Again, just repeating the process, put the top kit on the pole, take four or five pellets, just ping them out to 14 and a half metres. And I'm fairly happy to leave that left hand line of the two with the expanders because I've put in a decent pot about, about a quarter of a pot full of four mils a good half hour ago just to see if that had sparked the fish into feeding, which it hasn't, but I'm happy that I'm happy to to put that in there and just leave it because I know that I can leave it for half an hour or an hour or so and I know that there's enough bait down there to hold the fish if they do put their heads down and start feeding. A lift, little lift on the float straight away there. Just going to gently lower that rig in. The indication straight away. As soon as that pellet's getting to within about a foot of the bottom, there's fish having a go at it, and you can see all these little dips on the float. And there's another fish on straight away. Again, only a small fish, but it goes to show that even the silvers are having a go at, at proper six mil hard pellets this time of year. It's suddenly woken up, we'll see what it is. Another nice stamp roach. Again, these are the sort of stamp I've been off camera that I've been catching on that six mil hard pellet. A good sort of six to eight ounces. So we'll get him popped in the net and hopefully have a few more. But like I say, if, if I keep the, the six mil pellets going in, hopefully with the activity of the silvers feeding on them, one or two carp might get drawn in. And then we can start to put a bit more weight in the net. So like I've said, repeat the process, five or six pellets. Ping them out to 14 and a half metres and then ship out and just lay the rig in nice and gently. And the other thing to note with hard pellet fishing is what I'm trying to do is lay the rig in against the toe. So making sure that, that that pellet swings nicely under the float and it's not sort of tramming through and sort of skimming the bottom when it does get to depth. All right, so there's a better fish now on the banded pellet. And I've had plenty of little indications while I've been fishing out there. And a couple more roach, but this seems like possibly the best fish that we've had on this line. Doesn't feel massive, but again, this way you've got to use decent gear on this line when you're fishing hard pellets, sort of like a, a hollow elastic like this, just in case, because you could hook everything from small roach up to sort of big carp. So we'll find out what this is in a second. Could be an F1. And it is a nice plump F1. Looks right in the top lip again. But that's a lovely fish to catch, is that one. Again, those will those will be good weight builders this time of year. And those are really what we're after on that line. 
and I've had a few fish on that pellet, probably five or ten, so I'm going to take the pellet off and replace it, put a fresh one on. It looks like that line might start to come good now. Just using a little bait banding tool, dead simple. Nice small band, I like to use the micro bands when it comes to this style of fishing, just so they hold the, the, the uh, bait a little bit tighter. Just try and pick a nice uniform pellet, one that's a little bit longer than, than the others, just so it stays on the band a little bit better. And then that's spot on. So same again, five or six pellets in the catapult. And hopefully if the F1s are there, by feeding like this, we'll be able to keep them there and keep them interested. As I've said, if it's a case of missing a lot of bites and foul hooking fish, then I'll just go on to the 0.6 rig and fish a little bit more positively. But with F1s especially, a lighter rig, the lightest rig you can get away with is usually the best because they can be very finicky when it comes to the bites that you're trying to hit. So I'm just going to let the bulk swing under the float and then lower it in really carefully. You can see when it comes to this style of fish now, I have the bristle dotted right down. So, so as I've said, I can actually see the, the pellet as it registers on the bristle. So as soon as that pellet moves, the bristle registers it. Then you see the bite as soon as it happens. I think that's one of the reasons why hard pellet fishing is so effective is like I say, the, the pellet itself will register on the bristle. So as soon as that moves, you see the bite and you can hit the bite straight away. Another tiny little indication there, and this looks like a roach. Catching some wheel variety on the uh, both the expander and the hard pellet today. She should be able to just about swing him. Another nice stamp roach that. Okay, another fish about sort of two three ounces. Again, not the best weight builders on a day like this where we're looking for sort of the F1s and better bream and stuff, but it's good just to get a few bites and like I say, it gives me an idea when I come back to a few commercials in the next few weeks that I can catch on hard six mil pellets. And just making sure I lower that rigging rather than laying it in because I don't want to, to lay the rigging across a fish's back or anything if there's a better carp down there. And that's another fish on. So they've definitely gone down and start to feed a little bit now. So I think what we'll do is keep plodding away and hopefully try and get into a few better fish as the, the session progresses. Another one of these roach. So we'll crack on now and see what else we can catch.
Right, so there's a fish on now over that six mil pellet line. This is shot off, so it must be a carp of some description. In sort of the past half hour, while I've been off camera, we've had a bit of an arrival of the carp. To be fair, we had plenty of roach while we were on camera on this uh, this right hand line. Then we had a couple of F1s and then suddenly we had a carp out of the blue. And it's just been sort of a mixture of a couple of F1s and about four or five smallish carp on this line now. Definitely think it's down to the time of day. And once you, when you're pinging pellets as well, it's the best way of drawing fish. So out of all the lines that I fished today, this is the one that I sort of expected the carp to turn up on. Because once you get one or two going down there, obviously it sparks a few other fish into or a few more carp on and better stamp fish into feeding. Very quickly you can get get a shoal sort of going and that's what seems to have happened here. This feels like a much better fish this one. Really nice nice sharp positive bite that we're looking for and it's it's nice that the water's gone a bit flat calm as well so I can see the float properly. Yeah, it looks like a proper carp this. Not the best piece of netting you'll ever see. See if we can get him to turn. That's a really nice fish to catch, is that? Would sort of two, three pounds, probably the biggest of the session, that one. Nailed right in the top of the lip. It's exactly where you want to be hooking these fish when you're catching them on hard pellets. Like I say, that's a cracking fish. We'll see if we can just hold him up for camera. So like I say, that'd be the best fish of the day so far with about an hour or so of the session left to go. See, immaculate common carp, that. So we'll get him popped in the keep net. We'll see if we can get a couple more. And all I've done really over the course of the day is just up the, the amount of feed that I'm putting in each time over that line. So I'm now pinging sort of six or seven pellets at a time. Just adjust the shot in so it's back to where it was. Like I say, that's pretty much all I've done. With the wind dying down as well, being able to feed a little bit more accurately. And the fish really seem to have responded now a bit later on in the day. So again, another six mil pellet on the hook. Then before I ship out, fire out six or seven pellets. Keep them grouped nice and tight. We'll see if we can get another. Again, because the fishing suddenly picked up on this line, I've not actually looked on the, uh, the expander line or sort of the, the 10 o'clock line out into the lake for a good hour or so now, but I expect there to be a few fish down there, probably roach and skimmers, now that those four mil pellets will have broken down a bit more. Again, like I've already said, I put a decent bed of bait down there, so I'm happy that they've not eaten it all. And it's not like we're getting loads of indications on the float when we're fishing over the six mil pellets to say that the fish are sort of frenzied, there's been no fizzing in the peg, it's just been the odd little dip and a movement on the float and then a proper bite out of the blue, so sort of what you're looking for this time of year really. We've only foul hooked two or three fish over this line as well, which is good. Again, I've made the switch to fishing the 0.6 rig after foul hooking one and that's really improved the, the fishing and I've ended up hooking a lot more fish in the mouth. In time, little movement there and lift. That's another fish on. Definitely not a carp, this one. <laughs> Nice roach, we'll just swing him to hand. Okay, we've got plenty of these over this line, but that's the first one I've had in about an hour. Lovely colours on them. And the beauty of fishing hard pellets, you can be straight back out really quickly, so... Again, just repeat the process, a few hard six mil pellets, ping them out and then ship out over the top. And just making sure I've got the bulking line with the far bank marker and then just lowering it down. And 
another sharp dip on the float. Again, by only feeding sort of five or six pellets at a time, a few of those will get eaten, so the fish don't have loads of loads of options on the bottom. So that's why you get some really sharp and positive bites fishing like this. And obviously, because there's a bit of a spread between the bait as well, when they do pick it up, they will move off and, like I say, get a, give a much sharper indication than you would if you were fishing over sort of like a little nugget of micros or something like that. Another sharp little bite. Looks like another roach this time. Again, not your average fish to be catching on a hard six mil pellet, but at least we're getting plenty of bites and putting a few fish in the net in this last hour of the session. So what I'm going to do this time is put a couple of pouchfuls of 6mm pellets in, so probably about 10 pellets in total. Just try and get a little bit more bait down there and draw the carp back in. Right, so after another brief run of small F1s, couple of roach there, it's gone a bit quiet, so what I've done is just sort of rested that area of the peg for five, five, ten minutes. Kept trickling in a few six mil pellets. Had to go over the left hand line, but it looks like there's nothing there at the moment. So I've gone back on this and straight away I've had one on the little point four rig. Again, when I'm not sure if the, if the fish are there, what I'll do is always go onto a lighter rig and then you can tell if the fish are in your peg. If, they, if you know they're there and they're there in numbers, the heavier rig obviously keeps the bait more stable. So that's what I'll do. But. We'll have another go on this point four rig and if it turns out there's a couple of fish to be had I'll, I'll switch to the point six for sort of the last five or ten minutes of the session and like I say we'll try and round off the session with a couple of fish. So in terms of how the six hours have gone today it's been really sort of all over the place. The short line started well had a couple of fish on it and it just went really funny couldn't quite get the fish feeding shallow and on the, on the bottom as well, it just didn't seem like it was going to happen there. For whatever reason, I had a few roach, a couple of skimmers and a proper bream and that was about it. Then sort of through the mid part of the day, it's been a case of rotating these two lines and sort of for the mid, mid middle sort of two, three hours of the session, I was only catching roach over this right hand line with the hard six mil pellets and over the left I was catching a mixture of roach, a few small skimmers and a couple of proper bream but there was never any consistency to the way it was fishing. It'd be a case of it looked like the fish were going down, feeding for a short spell, you'd hook a few, and then they'd spook and come back up to mid water. And it was just like the odd fish was going down and picking up a single item of food at a time. It was never like you were getting lots of indications. So it's hard to judge, but I think definitely today it's been an issue that the depth has been too great in the peg where we've been fishing. Again, it's pretty much flat as a table out there where I've, I've been fishing today, sort of up to 16 metres. It's pretty much level from a top kit and one right the way out. So we've not really had any shallower water to fish in, which I think would have made a difference. Because the day's gone on towards sort of like the back end of the session, a couple of fish have gone down on this right hand line with the hard six mil pellets. And we've put a, a couple of carp together and a few F1s and finished with a decent, decent few fish. Another bite and another fish on now. Feels like another little F1 this. Say so that we had an arrival of two or three F1s before the carp pushed them out and had sort of five or six of them. And then the carp seemed to disappear after we'd hooked a few. I think they're definitely still quite wary this time of year. Gone back over that line, had a couple of roach and then left it to settle for a bit and the F1s have returned. Actually, this looks like a little crucian this time. Another different species, it is. Lovely little fish, thought it was going to be a small F1 that. But that's the first crucian of the day, again on a hard 6mm pellet. Lovely colours to him. Cracking little fish to catch. So like I say, it's been an interesting but equally frustrating session today. Because I must admit, it's one thing that 
when I'm fishing. I don't like the idea of not being able to suss out the peg and not seeing any pattern to what's going on, but that's just been the case today. We've had to nick fish in a few pockets and, and just keep building the peg as the day has gone on. Again, I've tried to push sort of the left-hand line and the, the short line by potting in big pots of bait and it's not really made any difference. We've still had daft bites and, you know, compared to when we were feeding hardly anything, it's not really made a great deal of difference. But on the right hand line, by just sort of pinging pellets for the, throughout the course of the day, just sort of in threes and fours and then towards the back end, sort of in fives and sixes, and feeding a bit more heavily. We've started to put a good run of fish together. I think it's been a case that, because we left that for a good two hours, the fish sort of, had settled around that area and we've drawn a lot of fish by pinging pellets obviously because of the noise and I think as the day's worn on they've decided to go down and have a bit of a feed and we've caught a few. So at least the water's definitely warm enough for them to feed on hard pellets and like I say over the next few weeks when I go to a commercial fishery I know that I can get away with fishing hard sixes in the same way as this and feeding with a catapult. I think the water's now warmed up enough that we don't have to use little cad pots and put in micros and fish expanders. We can get away with using hard pellets. And like I say, when it when it comes to catching a lot of fish, that's the best way to do it. And try and be a bit more selective as well, rather than using expanders. But another surprise is that we've not had any proper bream over this right-hand line, which I thought we'd have had one or two. But there's only been a couple of skimmers there and it's just been a case of roach F1s and proper carp. So it's been interesting. We'll try and catch one more and then we'll probably conclude the session at that because like I said, we've pretty much run out of time on our six hour stint today. So just looking for a nice sharp bite and then we'll hopefully connect with the fish and conclude the session. Right, so there's another fish on now on the six mil pellet and I think we'll have to call this the last of the session. Doesn't feel like anything big, possibly a roach or a small skimmer, but I feel we've had a cracking session here at sunrise today. Definitely not easy, but learnt a fair few things about what the fish are doing this time of year. And like I say, it was purely to get me, get me sort of in tune with the fishing on commercials at this time of year. So not a big fish to finish off the session, but another lovely roach from the middle lake here at Sunrise Lakes. So we'll get him popped in the net and then weigh in. Right, so as you can see there, there's our final net of fish. 26 pound of a real mixed bag, few F1s, few carp, plenty of bream and skimmers and loads of roach as well. So it's even a crucian in there. Fantastic little mixed, mixed bag. Nowhere near the weight that we expected to catch today, purely because after about half an hour fishing it became clear that the fish weren't going to settle and get their heads down and feed. But we've picked a few fish off, rotated a few lines and, and learnt a few things about open water fishing on commercials for the next couple of weeks when I'll be on other commercial fisheries and trying to do similar sort of things. So like I say, it's been a really worthwhile session today. Hopefully there's one or two bits of information that you can pick out of today's video and little tips and tricks and stuff like that. So as always from Last Cast, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on that next episode.